broken now. As our master commanded, I have stirred up the orcs of the mountains. Even now, I have a force gathering amid the ruins of old Fornost. Return at once and prepare your forces. We will have need of them soon. My orcs will be ready. These lands have known peace for too long. They will soon feel the Dark Lord's wrath. Hello everyone and welcome to the Divide and Conquer version 5 beta. I am Sir Argument and we are finally starting it. I said I would do it this week and so I have. Uh, this should be coming out Friday. I'm going to do everything I can to get this video out on Friday morning. We are going to be playing the Remnants of Angmar led by Overlord Agendaur here in the far north where we have yet to do a campaign on this channel outside of Arid Luin, but they were like up here in the northwest corner, that doesn't count I think we're in like the north middle not so corner I guess <laughs> anyway we're gonna be playing this on of course very hard very hard just showing off some of the changes in version 5 although there's not too many for Angmar I believe some of the UI on the um, Front screen here has been rearranged. I believe like the notable units is different from what it used to be in version 4.5. I could be wrong about that. It's been a while since I've played the official unit that is currently out. But anyway, we're just going to go ahead and get right on started with this. The biggest changes, of course, to version 5, in my opinion, is the way that recruitment is done because this affects every single faction. And that is the fact that you will need to train, or not train, but you'll need to construct the different tiers of meeting halls in order to unlock your higher tier barracks, archery ranges, and stables. So by that, I mean every faction right off the gate can build their first level of barracks or whatever. They might have a combined barracks where it does all three, like some of the wild men have all their units going into one barracks. But if you want to go to the second tier or the third tier, you're going to need to upgrade your meeting halls typically to the third or fourth tier themselves. So it's like meeting hall and then great hall and then like lord's hall and then whatever the last one is. I, the, the last one might be lord's hall, but typically for most factions, if you want their end game barracks, instead of waiting to like turn 64-ish when the barracks event used to kick in, you just simply need to get out your highest tier town hall and then build your barracks from there. So anyway, th welcome to Divide and Conquer. I'm sure probably all of you know about this message. If you are new to the mod though, uh, you can read through this to see what is different from the basic Medieval 2 experience. Um, I'm not going to read through this, but you can pause and look at it on your own if you'd like. This will answer like probably... 90% of questions like frequently asked questions about the mod and that is the whole purpose of this Anyway, we are the remnants of Angmar Ice and wind all that remains of the once great northern realm in ages past the north was a hub of activity Roads were packed with merchants passing from Car and doom to the misty mountains War camps dotted the land as great black fissures in the bare white landscape and great cities rose from the wastes like oases in the snow now, however, the north is barren and empty and few remain. This is actually quite a long introduction here, but if you want to know more about Angmar's history, uh, you can go through this. This is actually my second time re-recording re this, and I wasn't too satisfied with my, I guess, voicing in the first episode here. So this is actually the first episode now, but you can read about their history if you would like. I am just going to let you guys read through that, otherwise we'll be here for about five minutes, and I want to get this campaign started. Of course, diplomatic information, it's just showing that Gundabad is allied to us and they're going to war with people. If we take Gundabad, which I want to do, honestly, we can get snow trolls there, but I also read we can get snow trolls in the Etten Moors as well. So, I want trolls, I think trolls are great. Looking at our factions, there is one special rule that I will be somewhat employing here. Overlord Agendaur, the Lieutenant of Mordor, shall only be going out with his Iron Crown units. So for, in order for him to start campaigning on the field, outside of defensive purposes, and by that I mean if he needs to defend a town or something, he can defend it. But I will not use him to lead like armies attacking people outside of him having 
Iron Crown units in his retinue, which means we would need to get to the Guard Barracks to start training those. So Iron Crown Warriors and up. So Guardians of Crown of Karn Doom, North Guard, Dark Blades, etc. Artillery is a special case. Of course, artillery can be there. Um, but I will not be marching him out until I can train those units. I might... I'll, I'm going to send him to this fort, though, because he does not get free upkeep. Uh, he was costing us 400 gold a turn, so that's going to be his first order, is just sit in that fort and get us some free upkeep. It sucks that he doesn't get free upkeep. He honestly probably should here. They should probably do something with Barad Haleg to give him free upkeep, but unable to be trained. Just something like that, I think. Uh, more Holt the Hillman. I'm going to try to be as thematic with him as possible and have him mostly just lead as many Hillmen as he can. He'll be our main Rudauer uh, army leader there. I wonder if I can roll that Rudauer. <laughs> that was gross. I am still struggling with my R's. Uh, Yelvin the Half Elven was giving me praise about that, uh, but I am still awful. Uh, Lord Sild, I think he's just going to be all around just whatever he wants to be. He's a dark blade general and a very good one at that. Very good at fighting the rangers. So we'll want to get him out of Latash and down to the front. And Drangu the Bloody shall primarily be leading orcs as much as possible. So orc skirmishers, orc raiders, orc fighters. He's going to be our orc boy throughout this campaign. And then that just leaves our Barrow Whites led by Hoonvorn. Who's also just going to go out there. He'll be our Barrow White guy whenever we can get those. And then whatever other units that we can toss at him. Like the Thralls and other cheap infantry. I like the Thralls because it sounds like they're under his, his control. He is somewhat of a magical being himself. And him just having conscripts like this to bleed for him I think would be pretty cool. And this is actually a new Barrow White model. You can see them on the um, UI here. This just got added a couple of days ago. And here is their new appearance. I think they look very cool. Um, of course, they are good against armor. They frighten the enemy. They have two hit points. Very good defensive skill. Okay-ish armor at six. They'll take some arrows pretty decently. And 13 attacks. So Hoonvorn definitely just needs to go out. And we have a few places to expand to. There's Angsul up here in the northwest. There's a town here, and there's Nukfa Regla, which is down this way. But the Dunedain will typically capture this, I think, in the auto expansion. It's either the auto expansion or they just march an army up there. Drangu the Bloody, however, will be tasked with capturing the outpost down over here. So if we send him down that way, we can go to Movatarth and start besieging it. His three wargs will destroy the guys here. Our only issue is that. Uh, Imladris does get a full army here, but from what I've noticed in my little test run, they kind of just hang out there. Oh, that's weird. The flag at Mount Graham just kind of sticks out through the top. Anyway, we're going to probably want to get some buildings going on here. I'm thinking it's not a bad call just to get our Mason's Hall out here, just to make everything a little bit cheaper. In fact, that's probably going to be what we go for. Latash as well. I'm not sure what we're going to do with Latash. In all my campaigns, I don't really mess with it that much. It's kind of out in its own corner. I mean, it's great if you go for Angmar, but it's just so underdeveloped. Like, there's just nothing we can get here but cheap units. So, maybe with a few Mason's Halls and upgrades, that way we can make something happen. We'll send Lord Sild out to the front. I'll grab these Snowwork units and have them meet up at the fort here. Now, we might want to send more Holt over this way. In fact, we probably will They'll go out this way towards Barkel. Like, this will be our first expansion. We're going to have to besiege it out because of these woodland hunters that they have. In fact, is there any other units that we could send in? Um, we'll probably want to get as many archers as we can. Our, our economy is not that great, honestly. It's pretty poor. Um, but if we can just kind of keep our cheaper units out in mass, let's grab those pikemen and... Let's grab some hillmen, they're very cheap. We'll send uh, the Angmar archers down to this barracks as well. Make sure that they keep that free upkeep as Hoonvorn gets ready to attack Barkel. Do we still get our mercenaries here? No, we do not. So he can just stand right there. He can grab these units on the next turn. It says we're losing money, but that will quickly fix itself. In fact, we should probably get a diplomat out, shouldn't we? Let's get this diplomat here. We'll send extra reinforcements to this fort and then prepare to take Ong Sul over there. In fact, Hoonvorn, why don't you go ahead and build a watchtower right there for us. That's looking great. We'll go ahead and end this turn. And I'm going to cut this one out because the first turn 
always seems to take a little while um, in this beta build, so I will cut it back when we get to turn two. All right, and we are now on turn two, and looks like there is actually a troll that we're going to need to fight here. Captain Gosh, the remnants of Rudar. If we fight him, he'll probably draw out these remnants as well. Let's just check these abysmal relations with the high elves, of course. I mean, those aren't going to be good. Now, I'm kind of hoping that the dwarves over in the west there kind of go the turn of evil, because it's Emmer is not an easy campaign. I think I can handle it, honestly. Uh, but if the dwarves get to us, we're going to be kind of threatened. Oh, and this is also a good time to show off some of the new um, campaign strategy map models um, that have been added to the game. This is now the new generic Angmarim town. Uh, you can see the old and the new is all on the Divide and Conquer Discord in the preview section there. But I think this just looks phenomenal. I love how detailed it is. Like, if only I could zoom in farther, as I say that, I'm, like, getting closer to the screen to look at all those details, but it looks really cool in my opinion. Alright, so let's go straight for Morvatarth. Perfect, Captain Gash is going to bring Captain Solas out here. So, we'll give it our first save here, we'll call it Big Bertha, we'll overwrite that. And we will go ahead on the battle. Now, these trolls do have a lot of... Uh, they have five hit points, but they have low armor, so we should be able to simply skirmish them down to nothingness with our three archers. Funnily enough, in my test run, I just had Drangu going out to build watchtowers, and he got ambushed by these trolls, but he was able to solo them without taking like any casualties, so I am not concerned whatsoever about these guys. Our only concern is all the hillmen that we will have to also fight. Let's move you guys up just like that. It is raining, which kind of sucks. It will give these trolls somewhat of a missile uh, debuff here in terms of taking damage. But with three units here, I think we'll kill them relatively quickly. And of course, as they get closer, they'll take more damage. And of course, wargs also have a very high firing rate. Cavalry archers shoot much faster than infantry archers. So that's just something good to um, be aware of. Their DPS, although they have less soldiers typically, their DPS is very high. Alright, let's keep on moving guys. Let's keep on moving. Let's keep our distance. We want to kill these trolls as quickly as possible. The quicker they die, the better, but this rain is not making it easy. In fact, I think it's actually making it pretty hard for us to get kills here. I hope we have enough ammo for those Rudauer Savages. Up, start running, start running. Not get caught, please. Come on, wargs, go, go, go. Ah, oh, they're doing that weird column thing. I don't know why they do that sometimes. That's really gross. Right, come on, kill these trolls. How are they not dead yet? They should be dead. I think it's actually really just the rain right now that's uh, screwing us over. Oh, now a few are dying. Gotta watch out for some of our shots if they come downhill and hit our other wargs. That won't be great. They're down to 12, which is good. I'm definitely noticing a difference, though, with the rain. Oh, now a couple more are dying. Their HP pools should be slowly ticking down. I think if we can just get a few more frontal shots, we'll have better accuracy. Oh, come on, wargs, go that way, please. I'm gonna lose a, I think I'm gonna lose a couple of, oh no no pull back pull back pull back <laughs> getting a little bit risky here at least we have plenty of time until the other um, our reinforcements or their reinforcements show up I keep running away we might want to send Drangu in for a quick cheeky charge in fact yeah let's do that let Drangu just take care of them for a moment here see if he can get some cheeky damage Yep, there goes a couple of trolls taking some damage. Drangu's going to take some damage, so let's pull him out. They're still shooting at the general who's back there. Come on, trolls are down to five men. All right, Drangu, keep on shooting. We just got to save some ammo for those uh, Rudar Huskarls that the uh, garrison has. Come on, shoot them down, shoot them down. Five left here. Two are left, that is getting better. We could probably send that one to go point blank the other trolls. Oh, one is left here, that is great. 
let these guys um, probably run over here and start dealing with that other troll. Andrango, take him down. It's one single troll. You're already at the red line. There we go. That is perfect now. Now let's see if we can get a cheeky charge on this man's. Turn off all fire at will. Wow, they are firing from a distance there. Perfect. He is dead. We have done it. We've killed the troll captain. Now let's amass our forces to deal with the men of Grudaur. <laughs> I cannot do that today. Grudaur. 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 I, can, I just can't do it today. I'm sorry, Elvin. <laughs> I am just breaking my voice attempting to do that. I can do it with Gondor and Mordor, but something with Rudaur, like that, that, that hour sound makes it really hard. Rudaur. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna keep butchering that today. I wonder if I could do it with Angmar, like let's say it. Angmar. I can't, I can't even do it with that. It's certain sounds I just cannot do right now. I will, I will practice it off camera so I stop embarrassing myself, as I am doing right now. Now, well, everyone can just probably fire at will. We do need to take out those Rudar Huskarls, though. That is the biggest threat to us. And we need to actually start taking out these Hillmen. Uh, yeah, let's uh, let's see if we can get a charge on these guys. We'll try to use um, Drangu as best as he can to charge into these guys head on while the other works going from behind. Drangu is, of course, a very strong general, and if we can just start routing them off, we'll be okay. You guys keep on running this way. They're getting good kills. Like these helmets are very weak to archers. Right, let's charge this unit now. They're caught in a charge animation, so we should do a lot of damage. Side charge, frontal charge. They are wavering. Will they break? I hope they break. No, nope, they are. Yep, there they go. Perfect. If we can just start um, tactically taking them down one on one like that. And we probably want to capture them all and execute them just so that the, they don't go back into their little base there. Let's save our ammo for those Rudar Husk Curls. I mean, you guys get a point blank charge. Oh, nope, too close. Let Drangu do it. You guys fall back. And most of those Hillmen are down. Now right, you guys come back in. Ah, oh, perfect. They're all routing. This is great. Drangu, you capture all those. All we need to do is deal with the last two units over here. We've lost a decent number of our wargs, but that's, that's okay. We didn't get to just use all our ammo on these Hillmen like I originally wanted to. We did have to fight the trolls here. My first run through, I killed the trolls and then I pretty much just shot out the hillmen and charged them in an open field. And it was a sunny day, so there was no issue with all this rain. Uh, Drangu, can you shoot those huskarls though? Can you whittle them down to maybe like a hundred men? That would be preferable. Got about three there. Not terrible. Our wargs are getting tired, though. We need to get those... We need to pull them away from our... Um, from their captain there. If you guys go in for another charge, just flank those guys. Drango, keep on firing, please. He'll regenerate his casualties, though, so I'm not worried about his damage. Most of these helmet are dead, which is great. Once you work, start firing at those guys. And let's put this on time six for a minute. Kill as many as we can before we do the final engagement. Still down to about 113, which is great. If we can just get a three-way charge on these uh, men of Rudauer, we shall defeat them. Drangu's taking some damage, though. In fact, actually, I don't even want to charge him head-on. I feel like he's just going to die. Let's have those guys, let's have those wargs go in, and then Drangu will come in. In just a moment, he is almost out of ammo. I right, charge in Drangu. They should be turning their back any second now. We'll send in these wargs as well. Come on, get some good kills. Yes, there they fall. And their captain's right over here as well. Oh, that was a very poor charge. That was awful. Right, they're still steady, but there's only 50 of them remaining. Rudar Huskarls are a very solid unit. At least their upkeep will be pretty low for a few turns, thanks to Drangu losing a lot of his 
a lot of his wargs here. At the end of the day, I consider that an absolute win. Uh, Drango going for another charge. We'll send in these wargs now. Hopefully they can get a proper charge. Here they come. Kill that captain, please. Yes, he has fallen. We will simply chase them down and make sure that none get out. Alright, that'll do. Heroic victory, 71 to like a thousand there. Drengu's company, of course, being a very good. They all got about the same kills, too. 220, 214, and 200. Uh, with the most casualties going to Drengu, but he did recover a lot of those. And I think Warg Skirmishers and Warg Raiders are going to be a key component to our campaigns here in Eriador. It's having a very fast uh, force of cavalry archers that can hit key points in our enemies, go in for deep strikes, and just be a nuisance is going to be important. Especially if we can get them deep into the enemy territory. If we can get them into those kind of weaker Dunedain camps down in the south and just kind of damage them and cripple their infrastructure, I think we'll be in for a good campaign. And wargs are fast, so we can quickly maneuver around the battle map. A Drago go ahead and capture more of a Tarth. We will simply occupy it. And it might be worth it to start upgrading it. Now, do we get trolls here? I believe we do. I mean, it said we do get them in the Etmores, but what would give it to us? That I am not sure. Definitely not Mount Graham Stables. Um, Fighter's Pit? That's probably not it. In fact, it might just be a little bug. It's probably just... Um, oh, cool. Our walls actually give it to us. So when we get to a large town, then we unlock Snow Trolls. So developing more of, it, more of a Tarth will actually be important for our campaign. But the problem is the High Elves that are simply just literally waiting for us. So maybe we get the Meeting Hall and we get some free upkeep here. We'll have Drangu put down a little Watchtower on the border there. And the High Elves do start with Kamath Bryn here, so that is something to watch out for. But if we can get that to a large town, which is 5,000 population, I think we'll be okay. At Lord Sildorn, she put another Watchtower there and go hop in our fort. I think forts are going to be very key to this campaign. And let's grab some more wargs, get them out on the field. And now we just need to go for the Siege of Barkeleg. Why don't you guys start besieging that? We'll get Hoonvorn over there, and let's grab some cheap goblin infantry. And in fact, I kind of want these snowwork spears. It's going to cost us a lot of money, but we'll have them. And we can just sit them in the fort for now. Hoonvorn, join up with Morholt the Hillman, and this might be enough of a force to do it. I would like our archers to be down here. Um, we're still going to be making money, but not much. These guys are 210 upkeep. That's not bad, but I think we can do it with this infantry force. Just because we have Hoonvorn, we have pikemen, and uh, we have Rudar Savages to take care of sellswords. Let's see if this force can do it and if we can force out an early um, attack from them. If they want to stay in their town, then we can send in our Angmarum archers and infantry later. I don't think there's any other building we can do. We moved our spy. Yes, we did not, actually. So they don't get Nokvaragla on the second turn. They must be getting that soon, though, with another army. Here he is at Brennan with a unit of eight soldiers here and his retinue coming up for Nokvaragla, which is just fine. If the Dunedain want to build up that town for us, that is fine with me. They can do it. If we actually take Nukvergla, we will get 2,000 coins, but I believe <laughs> the Dunedain are going to get that. So let's let them hurt themselves on that um, on this town. Let them take some casualties before we go in there. Because if we take that settlement, how are we going to deal with four units of Cardalon Riders, Dunedain Scouts, Dunedain Wardens, and the such? We'll let them hurt themselves. So they're not actually going to attack us yet at Bar, at Bar We could honestly... I don't think we'd win it if we took out the Goblin Infantry. I think these guys are key. Um, how many units do they have? They have three Hillmen, two Bandits, three Woodland Hunters, which are awful and melee. So they've got eight units there. We've got eight as well. I mean, I think with the Barrow Whites, it does give us a Force Multiplier. I just like having the Goblins, though. I think they'll they'll be pivotal, um, pivotal in our engagements here. Alright, so we've got our uh, Mason's Hall built. We're honestly going to need economy. But I really just want to keep pumping out those Mason's Halls here to make our building super cheap in Karn Doom. After all, there isn't much that makes us money here. I mean, if we build a grain exchange, that's 
Eh, 70 gold. Maybe it is wise to go for some economy now. Land clearance there. And anything in Carton Doom. I guess we can get the leather tanner. That's 40 gold at the end of the day. That's not terrible. Anything just to kind of boost our income. Um, let's go ahead and have these wargs capture the fort here. Save a little money everywhere that we can. Um, is there anywhere else that doesn't have free upkeep? I think everything else is fine. I think we'll continue to just siege them out and do some damage over time to these men. And we'll see what uh, Branon does here to Nokvaraglaw. In fact, if they do take enough damage, we can simply send this force down there next. But I really want Aang Sul up in the north. We'll go ahead and end that turn. We're going to play it somewhat safe in the early game here. But we do need to move on Aang Sul as fast as possible and grab territory. After all, it's going to be... The number of settlements that we have that affects how much money we have more than just developing our key settlements as we are not a very good economic nation. That's definitely Angmar's weaknesses. The lands of the frozen north are poor in in terms of quality of resources outside of iron. It is kind of a lower tier resource in this game anyway. You get that meeting hall in more of a tar, so if we wanted to we could get some free upkeep and we might want to do that. We might want to get these thralls and hillmen. And go for this land clearance. Just anything to save some money. Um, as well as give us a simple um, hammer. Or not a hammer, but an anvil to our warg hammer against those um, high elves. Let's send Drangu out on watchtower duty. Uh, can we not build one there? Oh no, this isn't Drangu. This is some captain. Uh, I felt dumb there. Uh, yep, so they are besieging Nukvargla now as we are besieging Barkelag. In fact, I think if we pull out these Galvan infantry, I think they will come out and attack us. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, let's send these Galvan infantry just off to the side for now and see if that is enough to get them to attack us earlier. I want that land. Keep eyes on this general, though, and see how many of his forces actually die in this attack. I think he'll win it, though. He has a lot of good units there. Um, our diplomat, we will keep sending you this way. Um, we should have trade already with Gundabad, I believe. Yeah, we are trading with them. Not much money, though. Could be better. And we will simply move on. I'm trying to think if there was any other major changes to Angmar, but I don't think there's anything too drastic outside of the model changes to the Barrowites, as well as the settlements themselves. Of course, now if you do take um, Mangolin, you do get Barrow Whites down there, and I think you can get Barrow Whites in the other um, Dunedain cities. Ah, uh, so dumb. It, it, it actually expired the uh, mission just because they took it. We get a little bit closer. Ah, oh, they actually took quite a bit of damage. That's great. Cavalry, not so much, but their Cardolan Sentinels are down, as is a unit of Dunedain Warden, so I'm happy with that. Uh, I think our spies are going to be very important to seeing what's going on on this campaign. Did you get some thralls down there? Karn Doom got its leather tanner. Can you get anything else? I mean, we could go to leather worker. I think armor is going to be huge just to getting our troops to have better, um, you know, survivability. But at the same time, we do need that great hall because once we get this, then we unlock the guard barracks so we can get some iron crown longbowmen is really what I want out here in this campaign having these very decent archers five uh, missile attack 180 meter range that's going to be very important to our campaign here fighting the Dunedain rangers with our own um, arrows right, well Barkelig is going to rebel in the next turn anyway so we might as well join up the goblins and Drangu we could probably send you out now if you put a watchtower right here at the border and let's send one over here in fact I don't think we're allied to the goblins of Moria actually we are perfect so we get trade rights with them I don't think we get anything for taking Moria but we're gonna rely on them to kind of pressure the high elves as long as possible third Sild will continue to hold his ground there although it might be important to get some extra units. What's the cheapest we can get here? Definitely not the orc fighters. Let's just grab these two hellmen. I know I wanted to save money for Karn Doom, but we're going to get some more from Barkelag anyway. Oh, and here we go. Captain Selafinian. What a what a name there. Is going to attack Hoonvorn outside of Barkelag. We'll give it a tactical anti-crash save here, just in case any funny business happens. 
After all, it is a beta and anything could happen, although my streak has been good so far. Not too many crashes, which is great. Of course, now that I say that, watch it's going to start happening in this campaign. They did impl implement a fix, um, courtesy of, I think his name is Calistononian or something like that, where the annoying bug where on the campaign map your, um, what do you call it? The, like, when you look in the Fog of War and you look at, like, Kaza Doom and it's like a... What do you call it? And it, it Cause of Doom looks like Minas Tirith. That will no longer be a thing. Now, Galvins, you're the most expendable, so we need to get you up in that front line as quickly as we can. Mihilmen are pretty cheap, too. I think these uh, Rudar Pikemen are going to be pretty important, though, just to holding that front line. In fact, we should have Goblins right there in the front supporting the uh, Rudar, um, Hil uh, the, not the Hillmen, but the Pikemen there. As long as we can just shut down these archers, we will be okay. Get some Hillman on Hillman action there. Get you guys over there. Where's Hoonvor? And let's have you go onto this flank. Put our savages as well. These Barrow Whites will get over here. In fact, we want to give them some spacing. Get you over there, Pikemen. Start forming up. Goblin infantry, run in there, please. Pikemen, support your hillmen brothers over here, fighting other hillmen. And there's our root our savages. We're going to want them to get onto those cell swords as quickly as we can. It's going to be definitely a bloodbath for a moment here. Use Iron Fist. It does give you 100% combat effectiveness and permanent fatigue reduction. So there's now no longer a downside to that. That will let our hillmen start crushing their hillmen. Bear whites are engaged, which is great. That pikemen facing off against their enemy there, keeping them at bay. In fact, if we can get our huskarls back and around. Should we use Serpent Elixir? Yeah, we might as well. I'm not quite sure what it does. But yeah, let's get a good look at these new barrow whites. Oh, they look great. And they will cause fear in our enemy's line. Ah, oh, that looks so sick. I love, like, the black Numenorian colors there, the blue skin. My frame rate's going down a little much right now. I'm not sure what's up with that. Let's try turning grass off all the way. Oh, yeah, those guys look so great. I love this new model. There's also, like, that freaky um, model they use in 3rd Age Reforged. I'm not a big fan of that, though. Um, but they are cool in their own way. In fact, should we send these hillmen in now to try to maybe flank the rest of this force? We've killed 31% already. In fact, yeah, let's get these helmets inside the walls while the Huskarls start to flank here. Hoonvorn's taking some damage, but he'll be alright. He's got hit points. Come on, get in there. Get in there, Huskarls. Start killing those cell swords. Start cleaving these men with your giant axes. Oh, they got a counter charge. How did they do that? Cell swords are going down in mass, though. 91. Like we can probably just speed this up now. It is just a mosh pit. As long as we can just simply make them all run away. And thankfully this settlement has no towers for us to worry about, which I kind of like. We do another Iron Fist. Not quite. You guys get in there. We've killed 77% of the enemy. It is now just a mosh pit at the fort here. Let's use another Iron Fist in just a moment here. Get in there, please, boys. We can just simply shut down these archers. We'll send some helmet up there to deal with the forces at the top. And get our goblins up there as well. I think the rest of our forces can simply take down these, these men over here. Let's use Iron Fist. I don't let them shoot at us. What are you guys doing? Don't let these woodland hunters fire any more shots. Oh, they're so spread out, though. They're going all the way to the back gate. Kind of ridiculous. Don't go. Why are they doing that? <laughs> right, well, we should be winning this fight now. Goblin infantry. We'll start to capture the front gates here. Yep, start capturing that town square. While the rest of you go after these woodland hunters. We're starting to route. Let's chase those ones now. We pour into the city. Let none survive. Show them no quarter. 
You guys capture that square and you guys... These goblins should be able to take care of these woodland hunters. There's only 59 of them. Capture them all. They're wavering. Come on, make them route. There's only 50 of them. You have 208. And they are routing. This is perfect. Do you guys capture those? And the battle is over. 291 claims 1300. Most kills, Rudauer Pikemen. No big surprise there, pikemen are amazing. But Hillman also getting 222 against their fellow countrymen. Bear White 71 and 84 respectively. They do have lower um, numbers of units in their retinue, so of course their kill time will be slower. But they probably got some good work in. I mean, their fear is invaluable to the fact that they'll scare the enemy and they are armor piercing, so they counter those cell swords. Is truly more valuable than simply killing 200 hellmen at the end of the day. And we will simply occupy the settlement. I do believe its culture is not great for us. We're going to need to start converting it. Ooh, Mladris is besieged. Hopefully that means the goblins are out there doing what goblins do best. Dark Lord of Mordor, our relations are good. And of course the public order is bad. Wow, we've actually really destroyed this place with devastation. We're losing 600 gold because of it, but that will recover. Um, it is 27% our culture. If we get the meeting hall, we can at least get 5% law and get some free upkeep. So let's do that, and then start getting the Shrine of Melkor to kind of fix our public order issues. Where is our spy? Let's send him back to the east and see what they are doing here. Hopefully they add another building that we can actually use. Um, but now I think we want to go for um, Aang Sul up in the north. And Mount Grammy Latash got some of their economy building, so maybe we keep going for that. The market would give us about another 80 gold there. Not bad, not bad at all. But actually, no, we need to upgrade. We need to upgrade Car and Doom itself. Open that up, and let's get that Great Hall. Um, I know I want that Mason's Hall, but we'll have to wait on that for now. Now, this army probably cannot deal with this force, but if we send in some wargs and maybe Drangu, I think we'll be all right. In fact, let's do that. Let's have Drangu and his wargs um, probably leave more of a Tarth for now. In fact, let's send this warg up to the, um, bar not the barracks, but the fort there. We do have a couple other units here that we could send out. Maybe we send these thralls up to this fort. We do have lots to play with here. That or we could send out these wargs to the fort. would probably be more useful at the end of the day. Have these thralls just sit here for free upkeep at the city. We might be able to send them down to this fort. In fact, getting a army down here to help deal with the high elves will be useful. Yeah, I definitely want to take this settlement and let them maybe get a couple more buildings here. They are, of course, weakened, and they won't be able to train their own forces for a few turns, which is nice. Also a settlement over here we can take, but I think Aang Sul will be the next big one that we go for. I think we're going to need these Barrow Whites here. This is the hard part. Do we have the Barrow Whites go up north, or do we have them fight the Dunedain? I think they're going to be better to go up north um, and go campaign against the... Um, fortress of Aang Sul, which we need soon. We could send these guys out as well. We are making about 1,400 gold. I think Morholt's going to have to hold Barkelag and then be the guy to attack this with reinforcements from Drangu as well as Lord Sold here. We do need some Thralls, though. I think Thralls are going to be important for fighting all those cavalry. We have pikemen, but at the end of the day, four units of cavalry, one unit of pikemen. Who's going to win that fight? Of course, they only have one ranger general here, but he is threatening from afar. And we do have a, a mission to send our diplomat to the Anduin, so we shall do that. After all, they should just be right here. Ah, but they're under siege, so we can't actually talk to them yet. We'll have to go to the next city. And we do have um, Morvatarth finished its land clearance, which is great. It will start to grow a little bit quicker. We could even get that Shrine of Melkor to give us another 0.5% population. I just worry about the High Elves here if they do attack us, but hopefully they be passive. In fact, this is already halfway, like half, you know, followers of Melkor anyway. But I think if we just turn on low taxes and grow it quickly to get walls and stuff, we'll be better off at the end of the day. 
But at the same time, we'd do better if we just kind of worked on Mount Graham and such. Alright, now let's see here. What did you guys build? Nothing yet. They are probably still doing it, but we could march on them and take that settlement. Let's have Hoonborn kind of scout out what they have over here at Angsul. It is another army of eight with hillmen, lumbermen, woodland hunters, cell swords, privateer axemen, so a little more threatening actually. We're going to want some archers to fight that army with, I think. We just aren't making that much money, and that's the issue. Yes, my lord. I mean, we could honestly send Morholt up there. And uh, wait, let's let them develop this settlement a little bit more as we go up north. So let us leave the. Uh, let's, let's leave the pikemen there. They're going to be useful. Have these guys go up north as well. Let's build a watchtower. Of course, public order is not great. Um, crap, let's see here. We could send Agandara there, but he's going to cost us so much upkeep. Maybe these Angmar infantry and Angmar archers can go sit down there. I kind of want the archers to go up north, though. They're going to be... Yeah, they're going to be useful here. Let's send the Angmar infantry here, and that's just enough to quell our public order issues. And Drangu the Bloody is on his way. And, ah, oh, we don't even have enough money for a watch. Are you kidding me? Yes, my lord. Oh, that sucks. Can we maybe get some money from them? No, we can't. Their dignitary. Um, well, that's unfortunate. We only have 1,200 gold, which isn't terrible at the end of the day. Send these guys down to the fort. We are not in any danger of Cardoom losing its um, losing its territory anytime soon. Get these wargs in the fort here. Lord Sild and Drangu will have to be the ones to go fight Nokfara Glaw down here. I, I kind of want to get these wargs out as well, but they're upkeep. We'll save it for a turn. And welcome to turn 8. It is winter again, and this is how it should always be in Angmar. It's just permafrost everywhere. It would be cool if there was a, like a script or something that could actually make it so wherever Angmar takes, the place is just in perpetual winter. I think that would be very, very cool. Like imagine if it was just always like this here, no matter the time. Even if you got down to Harad, <laughs> maybe not that far. I wonder if that is possible. I, I kind of doubt it. Well, maybe you could adjust something with the season. In right, the meeting hall. Let's see here. We got that done in Barkelix. We could get our free upkeep here, get our thralls and hillmen. Um, but we need to build... Should we build a Blatash? It's just not great for money, and it's a stronghold instead of like a fortress. We get about 70 gold there with the communal farming. I think we'll go for that. Right, Drangu, let's have you get that watchtower that I've always wanted. Have they, they've still not even built their building yet. What are they doing? I guess that gives us time, though. We can keep sending Drangu up to them. Up in the north here, yes. Morholt shall converge on Aang Sul with Hoonborn. And uh, they'll besiege this city in next turn. We also have some archers that can join up. Yes, my lord. I don't think this army is going to be enough. It might be. Morholt's pretty decent. We don't have the pikemen, though. But we do have two Barrowites. We will have some archers. We might be able to do it with this force. I think, though, we're going to need another unit of archers to go up that way. And that literally cuts all of our money again. Let's see if we can get that military unit if we send our forces down to Mithailburg. And, uh, oh, these hillmen. Let's get some free upkeep here. Go to that fort, please. Drangu is on his way, though. Hopefully they get another building here soon. I'm really curious to what are they building that's taking five turns. I hope it's not the garrison. That would be unfortunate for us. All right, well, it looks like that's all we can do again this turn. They're moving pretty quick. We're making our plays. Hopefully we can take Aang Sul or Nokfa or Gla in this episode, although looking at my time, we're already like 40 minutes in. And relations have been improved with the Goblins of Moria. That is always nice. We shall now begin our siege of Aang Sul. We won't actually attack it because attacking walls when they have all these woodland hunters is a death sentence. We will get our archers in there. And how are we looking down here? Did they get that building? Oh, we can't even see what it is. And they do have another army on the way. Let's see what they are packing. Uh, Cardalon Sentinels, Dunedain Rangers, and Cardalon Riders. 
So Drangu, you might have some raiding to do here. Anything else we can build? Maybe something at Bar Kellogg, because Bar Kellogg actually makes money, like at the end of the day. This place, this place works. At 86 trade, uh, actually that's not much, it just goes up by 6. Yeah, hold off for a moment. Can we get, uh, let's get these guys for free upkeep. And uh, maybe upgrade Mover Tarth a little bit. That was so tough. Maybe we grab some more units in Karn Doom, Angmar Infantry, and... Uh... Alright, so we're making 1800 gold. We could send our wargs out. That's about 200, 400, and then another 600. So we'd be losing 1000 gold, but we could start raiding against uh, the Dunedain here. And honestly, we need to do that. We need to start weakening them and going for go for a gloss soon. Hopefully they can get a couple more buildings here. Other than that, I think we are all right. After all, we do have these guys too. They could be the anvil to Drangu's warg uh, army here. And Lord Sild himself can come out there and fight. I think we'll march them out after one more turn. Hopefully the High Elves just leave us alone. On that turn, let's see if Aang Sul actually attacks us. Ah, I forgot about our diplomat. At least we can talk to um, Anduin next turn, maybe get some trade rights and sell some map information to kind of stimulate our economy. The wargs will cost us a lot of money, but at the same time, being able to kill those Dunedain armies will be imperative to success in this campaign. And uh, let's see here. Confirm report. Yeah, we're losing money. We're not making as much as we can. Khan got a ceasefire, which is pretty interesting. And construction is complete at Karn Doom. How much does it cost to get our barracks? It's going to be 3,100 gold, so we'll probably want to save up for that Mason's Hall. Now, they do have Captain Melon over here. But we should be able to kill him with our Warg army, I believe. Rangu, can you fight these guys? 351 to 539. Our biggest threat is going to be Cardalon Riders, who do not have a bonus against Wargs, and Dunedain Rangers who also don't have a bonus against wargs, as they do have swords. No shield either. So if we can just simply charge into them with this warg army, we will kill them. And by doing this battle, we should get about 300 gold. Kind of supplement our forces on the field here. Alright, let us start the fight here. Now we do have warg skirmishers here with the javelins. Good against armor. We'll probably want these guys to focus down the Cardalon Riders, while the rest of our wargs here kind of just deal with uh, the Dunedain. Drangu himself will need to kill those Dunedain Rangers. Let's have him go on the flank here. Have them just go into one group here and one group here. Maybe go into loose formation, that way we can absorb arrows a bit better. You guys run up that way. Our biggest threat is just that cavalry. Oh, Cardalon Sentinels have arrows? Ah, oh, okay, okay, cool, cool. That's even better for us. That's actually a lot better for us. Actually, it's kind of worse, but it's also better for us. <laughs> it means we can simply just charge into them while taking loads of damage. Looks like they're going to go after Drangu the Bloody. Do they have spears? I don't think they do. That means we can simply... We're just going to charge into them. That Drangu the Bloody absorbs some damage. Oh, you guys pull back, pull back. Avoid those Cardalon Rangers. You guys go for those, you guys go for that. Drangu, keep on shooting. Just be an, just be an annoyance, more than anything. That Drangu, get on those guys now. We might take some friendly fire from all of our archers, but that's fine. As long as we can just kill that captain quickly. And you guys keep running from those. Wargs pull out. Ah, Drangu's already making those guys waver. You have any special abilities, Drangu? You do not. Let's go for those. You guys keep on skirmishing. Drangu, pull out now. now. You guys need to be firing at those Cardalon Raiders who are catching up with them. Only half the enemy force remains. Come on, keep running, keep running. We might just need to converge on these guys now. Uh, yep, let's do it. 
Thank you, go for those rangers again. You guys pull out. We're taking quite a bit of damage here. Like, not gonna lie. But at the end of the day, it is a battle that must be done. I forgot about how effective those Cardalon Sentinels are, given the fact that they have bows. I wonder if they have much ammo, though. I, I bet that's their weakness. Probably low ammo. Nope, 24 missiles, so still an amazing unit. I charge into those rangers. We need to make them route. How are these uh, horses doing? They are getting wrecked, but so are our wargs. Perfect, those rangers are now falling. Everything is routing. We just need to shake off these Cardalon raiders here, and they are fighting to the death. Perfect. Everyone off of fire at will, please. No more friendly fire. Hopefully Drangu recovers a lot of casualties here. Uh, keep cutting these men down. Forgot that they got those, uh, those bows. That makes them very dangerous. Right, well, we will simply execute every last man so that we can... Um, or we could ransom them and get our money. That might be better, too. Sure everyone is captured at the end of the day. Capture that ranger. Have you guys start capturing these guys wherever they go. Keep it on time six. We might want the money, actually, now that I think about it. We killed our general up. He did fall. Captain Mellon. What an interesting name there. I guess, I mean, that is the elven word for friend. Perfect. 100% of those rangers fell. We lost half of our wargs. We healed a couple of them, but yeah, they took some damage there. I was not ready for those um, sentinels to all have bows. I forgot about that. That might be a change in version 5. In fact, while this load screen happens, I'm going to grab the rest of my coffee so I can finish that. Oh my, we would get a lot of money for that. 1,800 gold? I really want that. Yes, they took it. All right, that is actually great because now we can go straight for that guard barracks and don't even hold back. We can get our good units. Oh, we'd save more money with this Master Mason's Hole. 25% reduction, 35% reduction to time. And can we really afford to get these longbowmen out so quickly? Let's go for this. Let's save money on everything because we're a poor nation. And they did unfortunately go back to Nope for Glob, but that's fine. Uh, we will still... We made money, we profited, and they will keep building this town for us. And now what can we do at Barkeleg? Uh, anything else that we could build at? How much money are we making? About 800. We could work on more of a tarth some more. After all, getting the growth here and getting the trolls would be very, very good at the end of the day. You guys join that, it'll be... Four turns to besiege Aang Sul here. And uh, I think that'll do it. We could... I don't think we're ready to move on to this place, given that we just gave them so many sentinels back. Yeah, I mean, four missile attacks, not bad. But they've got good melee stats. Like, a lot of the Dunedain stuff is very strong. And speaking of the Dunedain, they are on their way to... Um, they're getting their, what do you call it, the reunited kingdom, it is on the way, I'm not going to say anything else about that, but thankfully, um, I guess I forgot to talk about this, but there is, of course, a new mod team in Divide and Conquer, well, same, a lot of the same people are still in it, but there are three new additions, and Lord of Lynx has, of course, taken um, control as pretty much de facto overlord tyrant ruler, <laughs> Just in title, though, that I am giving him now, because Divide and Conquer Secretary is such a weird, like, name. <laughs> he is now Great Overlord Tyrant, King of the West, Leader of Divide and Conquer, and his word is the utmost law. It's actually not that bad. I am definitely overstating everything here. He is a great leader, I think. He's done... He's had a lot of great suggestions here, um, and I'm very excited for all the progress that the team is going to be making, and don't worry guys, as soon as that Reunited Kingdom script comes out, I am playing a Dunedain campaign for you guys. Hopefully, you know, hopefully uh, that is okay with them. I should probably ask them for permission now. I used to ask Galu for permission, but should I ask Lynx now? I'm not really sure. <laughs> I'll probably ask him later and send him a message. Alright, Mountain Crown got its market, so we're actually making money, which is great. Um, but the High Elves... Oh boy, <laughs> they are on their way to Movertarth. There is no way we're holding that against High Lord Elrond. Oh my goodness. 
Uh, well, we are not going to invest anything else here. Um, wow, we're going to need to get some better units here at Mount Graham. I'm thinking it might be worth our time to get the... Um, like, leather tanners here and upgrade our units. I want to get a Hillman Barracks, though. Uh, also, like, having a Ballista would be good as well. Um, oh crap, this is hard to decide. We get a Hillman Camp here, it's gonna cost us a lot of money. Um, yeah, we're gonna need better units, but we also need a better economy. Yeah, let's keep working on, uh, Mount Graham. Let us get the Leather Tanner. And let us train some more works, we're gonna need that. The north, they are still besieging Aang Sul. I'm gonna make this episode a bit longer. We're gonna take Aang Sul before it ends. Just scout around, make sure that there's nothing else coming at us. Drangu, you might be able to assassinate Elrond, but I kind of doubt it. <laughs> It'd be a very tough thing to do. Have Lord Sild get out, though. We'll have him govern Barkeleg for now. That way, he's at least helping our income there. Still costing us some money, but at the end of the day, that is fine. Let us withdraw Drangu to this fort. Save our income there. And yeah, I think we'll end this turn one more time. We're definitely going to be losing Movertart, though. I think the High Elves are going for blood. Which means we're going to need to send our forces down that way, right after Aang Sul. Although, are they just going after the Goblin? They might just be going after that Rebel. That's fine with me. I think those might be trolls, so they'll just keep weakening themselves on it. The High Elves aren't generally too expansionist, but they can easily take Moe Tarth, and they can take Mount Graham if they want it. I am not going to be able to hold those unless I recall all of my forces. We're doing alright so far. Definitely the worst faction in the game for finances, but that'll fix itself in time. Latash is slowly making more money with its farming, and of course, more farming means more population, it means more taxes. Angsul is two turns away, and Lord Sold will start becoming a governor here at Barkeleg. Could go for another meeting hall to work on our upkeep here. Tough though, maybe Latash is better. That if we get the barracks at Latash, that would at least give us some other units that we could conscript here and send them to Mount Graham. But I think we'll go for the Leather Tanners. After all, that 40 gold a turn is pretty nice. Like, I'm not going to lie about that. Um, we'll probably want to get some more Rudara Savages. Rudara Pikemen. I want to get economy, but we also need to get um, some troops out here. Let's send our spy back up to Nook for Regla. They did pull out another army, which is great. If they keep pulling them out on the field, that'll be good for us. And I actually got two buildings here. I don't want to just send my spy off, though, to die, though, by, by scouting on these forces, though. So we'll keep them around for a moment. Um, Let's see. We're, we're about to take that in two more turns. We'll probably just wait that out. And then slowly have Drangu get ready to attack another force here. I'm fine with letting them develop no Thorag Law, though, and if they can keep sending out their forces and let us attack the town easier, then that'll be better for us. I guess if you have made it this far into the playthrough, and we'll talk a little bit about the Reunited Kingdom, as I imagine most people probably watch, I haven't looked at the analytics, but I feel like for most long playthroughs, you watch the beginning, and eventually you'll stop because you have other things to do, unless you're just passively listening to it. Like, I like to put it on my headphones and just, while I'm at work, if I'm working by myself, just listen to videos, music, or whatever. And I'll actually have time to listen to a whole Let's Play. Uh, if we take Goba Drain, we will get a military unit. Ah, oh, we, oh, we failed our Anduin mission. I completely forgot about it. But we can still get some trade and sell some map information to them. I'm thinking we can get a thousand gold from them at this point in the campaign. I hope... Yes, they took it. I am not opposed to selling map information to the AI. Looks like they're not actually interested, which is great. That is actually perfect. We could try to upgrade our work stables and get the Lord's Hall, but that is a tier 4 hall that we would need. I might just want to keep doing Leather Worker and give, us, give our wargs more armor so that they can be more effective in the grand campaign here. 
Alright, so one more turn and we will take Aang Sul, which is fantastic. Uh, let's see, I kind of want to get them to, uh... Oh, cool, they did the Master Carpenter, so that's actually great that they're doing that. We'll let them keep spending their money there, since we can't spend our money um, at that settlement yet. We do have two new wargs, welcome to the, um, army. Could send them down here to the Angmar Fort, and we might do that. It's gonna cost us money, though, maybe we let them sit here. Let's send these hillmen out this way. We'll mass another army to go attack Nokvaragla. Fed Barkelag does not make much money. Is there anything we could build that'd be useful? Get the uh, Shrine of Melkor, help with our public order, and hopefully that devastation will keep going down soon. We also have a full army here in Karn Doom ready to roll. About 2100 gold. Maybe we save the money so that we can get the last tier of Carpenter's Hut in Karn Doom. Let's go for that. So yeah, I guess, yeah, I can speak about the Reunited Kingdom. So, the current plan is that there will be a choice as the Dunedain to either reform Arnor itself and kind of retain the Beacon of Hope mercenary system, or to do the Reunited Kingdom and merge with Gondor. So you should be able to either merge with Gondor and then presumably Dol Amroth, or you shall be able to merge with Bree in Eriador and focus on re like basically reforming the Kingdom of Arnor to be independent. There's a lot of fine nuances there, there's a lot of discussion going around with the team, so the current idea at the moment that I've been reading is that the Reunited Kingdom would unlock certain units and the Arnorian tier would unlock others. And they are going to get walls if we let them stay there, so let's Form up our archers there. We're going to want our goblins front and center. In fact, let's send them to go this way. Hopefully they can get their whole army outside of these walls so we don't have to worry about being shot. I do want to start shooting at them as quickly as possible. In fact, yeah, let's start shooting at those lumbermen. Those are a big threat to our armored units. I'm not going to worry about shooting to sell swords. They are just going to kill us. But savages are on the correct side here. Keep our helmet over here, Barrow Whites can go up. But I really just want to start collapsing on these cell swords with these savages. Of course, they're probably going to die in this fight, but that's fine. Can you guys charge? And they're not going to charge. Okay, let's send in the goblins first to kind of soften up the enemy. I want them to kind of soak up most of the damage. We're doing some decent damage, though. 131 Lumbermen left, which is great. I want to keep some open avenues of attack for our... Um, what do you call them? For our archers to be shooting into. But it's good that they are focusing down these um, orc hunters here. Hillman, and get engaged now. Oh, that's cool. There's a little lake here. I like that. That looks nice. That looks so cool. Anyway, back to the settlement. I am a big fan of these town layouts, and there is there was talk with, uh, I think it was, I can't remember who it was, honestly, I'd have to go back in the messages. Um, it was either RK or the Elite Dwarf, I think it was the Elite Dwarf, we were talking about how um, we want more open settlements with these cool layouts like this, where you have high ground positions for units to shoot down off the walls in, and it would just be pretty cool to, to do. Well, we don't really want to get our savages up against a lumberman. But we want our armor piercing over here. Yeah, we'll move them over this way. Still doing all right here. Let's start uh, shooting at these lumbermen instead. But most of these guys are dead. Let's send in the cell swords. Let's use iron fist. I think it's about time. A lot of these goblin infantry are going to die, but that is okay. We just need to get our armor piercing here in this center pocket. In fact, a lot of these guys are routing. We might be able to collapse in on them. But yeah, let's start shooting at these lumbermen now. I'm okay if we kill some of our own forces. Oh, cool. They're actually sending in their units against our armor piercing. Alright, let's use Serpent Elixir now. 
We got a uh, double barrel white sort of just making these lumbermen run away. That's great. A lot of hillmen here. Let's try to get in on these privateer axemen. Ah, oh, perfect. The general is killed. Start sending in our forces now. Have these hillmen go into the settlement. And if we can just f make these privateer axemen route, we will win. They are surrounded by armor piercing axemen. There's a lot of light reflecting off their armor right now, too. We are getting shot now by towers, which sucks. But if we can make these guys run away, get off of those towers, that would be preferable. Come on, I need you to kill these axemen. Let's get the savages in mixed in. This is the last pocket of resistance that we need to deal with. Right, let's get our barrel whites over here. Come on, Hillman, keep fighting these hunters there. Oh no, don't get them on the walls. That is not good. Come on, they are routing. They're shaking. Get in there, Barrow Whites. You're my best bet at killing these guys quickly. Yeah, they are so deadly. You guys maybe want to start shooting at those. Keep killing these woodland hunters. We need these guys to route, like, right now. Come on, Hillman. Take down these woodland hunters. You guys will beat woodland hunters in melee. Perfect. More of the enemy is routing. Alright, stop firing at will. Come on, yes, perfect. They are running away. Just need to get these last woodland hunters to run away. I mean, they are sh they are wavering. We've got the fear around them. Ah, perfect. This whole this whole regiment is dying. They're fighting to the death. We have collapsed in on them. Come on, this is the last of them. Come on, hillmen. Get these on these lumbermen. Let's let the uh, let's let the fear causing units take care of this. Come on, there's only 48 of them and you cause fear. You can do it. It's in there. Start cutting them down. I believe they are also relentless, meaning that these Barrow Whites do not get staggered when they get hit, so they can really make use of their slow animations with those two-handed swords. You guys are, what, firing at Lumbermen? That's fine. They're taking some damage, though. Let's start running everything into the town square. Come on, perfect. These woodland hunters are routing. These guys are running away. Come on, let's get these woodland hunters out of here. Yes, perfect. Let's put it on time six. Now the, uh, all we gotta do is get these hillmen out of here. Come on. Yes. <laughs> A heroic victory indeed. We have taken the castle of Karn Doom. Looks like most casualties going to our angworm archers 163. I knew it was wise to bring those guys here. Hillman not doing too great. Goblin infantry taking a lot of damage, but that was their purpose. They were here, pick up damage, and just start tiring out the enemy, which is one of my preferred um, tactics. Use cheap fodder units to tire up an elite infantry unit, especially an elite armor piercing unit. Get them to be tired, and then your actual armor piercing units that can counter them will fight them much better. And of course, another amazing change that I love for version 5 is the loading screens. From the community um, loading or artwork challenge, uh, you will now see all of the entries submitted and on loading screens as you play through version 5, which I love. I think it would be cool if they had a little... If they went in and like actually added like a little name for who did it, I think that would be, be pretty cool. Um, maybe, that, maybe I can make that suggestion. Uh, we're going to go ahead and occupy Aang Sul, and it's making us good money, 761. First, we also sacked their camp, and we do have a Benedict for adoption. Overlord Agendauer, Lieutenant of Mordor, Herek, is adopted. He's a bureaucrat, which we kind of need. And we don't have a family tree, so just because he's a bureaucrat, I'm thinking I will take him in. And he can actually stay here at Doom and help us make money there. He is, of course, a witch knight. So he is a very formidable infantry unit. And we did get the Master Mason Saw. We will go straight for the Mason's Guildhouse. And oh, they added the way station back in. Cool. I didn't, that actually slipped by me. I didn't realize that they put that back in. Atash got its leather tanner. We'll keep it at that. 
And let's see what our enemies are doing. You head back over here, please. Ow, oh, I could get 83% success rate. I just don't like how if they miss, they die. We're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. I hope... I'm Fingers crossed he lives. <laughs> and he died, of course. See, that's why I hate spies. I don't like how they just die if they fail. I'm gonna reload that because that was dumb. <laughs> anyway, that'll do it for this um, episode, guys. Hope you enjoyed episode one of the Angmar campaign. And look forward to more as we expand our conquest against all of Eriador. I am Sir Agamund, and if you want to keep watching this series, just go ahead and hit that subscribe, guys. I hope this video takes us to 1,000 subscribers. That'll be a big milestone. And I will see you guys on the next one. Take care.